Good morning everybody and welcome to my humble abode once again. Today I'd like to go a little bit more into the automation of the AE Applied Energistics inscribers. So without further ado let's go down to the Applied Energistics floor. So as you can see I have these five inscribers built and behind the five inscribers that you can't see are inventory cables. Let me just see if I can fly up and see. You can just see here there's one inventory cable that goes behind all of them and the inventory cables come from basically all the way along here and here we have a redstone receiver and on the redstone receiver I've got some buttons and here I've got a little chart to tell me which button does which so if I want an engineering processor I press this button if I want a calculation processor I press this one and if I want a silicon circuit I press that one and the last one's a logic and they basically represent the, these inscribers here in that order and above above them I've got some um, some signs and some sign updaters also from Steve's factory manager but when I was doing this I was having some problems I didn't quite figure out what he was talking about so what I did is just set up a little example here and here I've got a whole load of redstone emitters and when I press this button here it should light up some of the redstone emitters in fact you can see here it's lit up all of the ones on the uh, so that's north on the east side so this is my east button and here's my west button so if I press this button it'll light up all of them on the, on the west side and at the back here I've got a reset button it turns everything off and here I've got a, a north where it just lights up the north it does actually light up a few others as well but that's just so I could prove to myself what was going on so this this particular emitter is called south and then this one here's the east here's the up one here's the the west one and the top one's the north one and they always light up irrespective of which button I press and actually here I had the south one so let's just press this button haven't done it. the south one should actually does nothing so let's go and have a look at what's going on so the trigger off is a trigger to turn off all the emitters so if I select here I've got all the emitters selected the sides all sides weak power and the output is zero so that basically fixed at zero turns everything off and this button is simply a redstone receiver and it's a second redstone receiver and that's the one on the left hand side from this side you can actually press shift and see where it's connected to if I press shift and it says click to lock the tooltip and here you can see we've got the inventory manager which is north of it and the south we've got some redstone so basically and a big button on the east side so that's the big button so that's this one it helps you identify sometimes where these are so basically what happens is when this any of these sides get triggered it will actually activate zero to, to all the emitters as you saw before when you press anything it just goes off here we've got something similar I've got one trigger which is on the east side and it's the first red train receiver which is the one just to the right of the factory manager I think so I'll look double check so if I click that it's losing some text here irritating there's a button here's a just that's the east side's got nothing and the inventory manager is south so so here's the south side of this uh, redstone receiver so it does get, seem to be a bit confusing sometimes if you but once you've got the idea it's not too difficult and what happens is when it gets triggered this button it says on the first redstone these actually are the, in the order of the physical order you can see them from here on the first one 
it sets the south and the east side up on and that's it the outputs 15 fixed which is full full power and we're not doing any pulsing the same for the next that was the east transmitter so the east transmitter we're pressing the east button should do it does the first and the third emitters and what it's doing is it's turning the east side on on both of those two and the output's fixed at 15 and again there's no pulsing and this just keeps going on until we've finished everything and this is a group and groups are quite useful because then you can group a whole load of commands so let's go back to the the calculate the processors and here I've got in this chest one diamond lots of redstone silicon pure certus quartz crystals not serratus as I used to call it and some gold ingots so what the idea is if I click this button here it should send a signal to the silicon press and it should press one silicon that silicon then goes out and should appear here on this one as you see it's just appeared and then of course you can then choose a processor so let's pick the what have we got engineering processors they're the diamond ones let's pick the logic processor I can't remember which one that is is that gold I think that's gold so the logic processor is the one on this side sorry so that will be gold so what we should see is so gold comes in here gets pressed goes into the side here disappears from that side there and comes at the bottom of here these get pressed and then the processor goes over here and ends up in this chest so we should see that go up to f six that's it so how does that work let's see if I can explain it right here are the here are groups each group represents one of the process uh, the inscribers so silicon's fairly straightforward what I do is I click it I did set an option by the way so that when I uh, enlarge a group it automatically opens the group if I turn that off the behavior is slightly different it goes uh, let's go back so if I open this one here you see this contents one and then you just click that and you get the same thing but it's a bit easier just to uh, um, to do this enlarge a group unless I press shift right so the trigger again this is like the button let's have a look so it's one red steam receiver we've only got one red steam receiver the interval is the one second so it does it after one second and it's the upside so the top side of the red steam receiver is the trigger for this to happen and what it does it then goes to the inventory goes to the iron chest doesn't matter which side it is I think for chests and takes one silicon whitelisted out of it puts the silicon into the ends insubs inscriber it targets the north side I think this is actually significant on this device and nothing's blacklisted so it just goes into the device and then after a while what will happen is this trigger here is an interval trigger so this trigger goes every 10 seconds and the connections are on interval you can change that this one isn't this one has the connections as a redstone controlled connection and the input so the input is looking for the, in, the ins, inscriber it's, just, and it's taking it from the east side so if you remember the east side is the, f, the right hand side from this view and what it's doing is it's taking a printed silicon circuit and the output of that is going into the first inscriber which is the one that puts the processes together the top side of it and nothing's blacklisted so let's do that one more time that's a bit on an on trigger it goes into here gets pressed and then it should after 10 seconds come out into here there you go right, the next one the sign updaters let's go back here 
let's say take the engineering press here I've got a sign uh, in fact let's I think I was playing with another one maybe it was a calculation one because what I was thinking about doing ah here we are this is the one no, no that's we'll do that last because that's the one that puts everything together so let's go to the engineering one so we have the, again we have the trigger the trigger is is the same redstone receiver until it's 10 seconds let's just make that one second we don't need it to delay really zero will be fine as well the redstone sides is the south side so that should be the left hand side and there's nothing else important redstone just that's for input signals for different ranges we don't care we do one to 15 is fine and connections is just saying it's a return controlled the sign so what happens here you've got the sign it's picking the th the second sign it's again it's in the right order so six blocks away five blocks away four blocks away three blocks away second sign what it's doing is changing this text here which is green so it's saying diamond and active so it's using a diamond for the engineering press the input of course it's going to be the chest target is the bottom side and the items is one diamond so what it's going to do is put into the bottom side one diamond no take for it doesn't matter actually of course where it takes it from sorry and here it's going to put it into the second inscriber on the north side and no no items here and when that's finished it's going to change the sign and say in the inscriber so in a way I'm using this in the workflow as a sort of a debugging aid so and then here is this is fairly straightforward it's an interval timer every 10 seconds it's taking it from the inscriber that we just processed and of course it's only taking it's taking the south side item and it's taking one printed engineering circuit it's putting that invent in circuit into the first inscriber the bottom of it and no it doesn't care about the items and then it's updating the sign to say press delivered so let's see that in operation shall we we've only got one diamond in here so it's a good example to see it's actually worth taking that diamond out and the engineering processor button is on this side here so I click that we should see the text changing here in inscriber it's printed the press is delivered and here it is still sits in this I have to turn that off and then we have no more diamonds in here but we have another a fourth engineering processor and the last one of these is the is this inscriber here where it's taking the silicon at the top and the circuit we want to do at the bottom and it puts into here the output and then that output will be then routed into this storage drawer so let's have a look at the logic for that go back out again so this is the processing logic so trigger again is simply in this case an interval timer we don't care just every 10 seconds it runs it's taking the inventory from here what it's going to do is it's going to take uh, redstone and where it's going to put it to, it's going to put it into the first inscriber on the south side and no, no item so it always puts it south side and just updates the sign saying redstone in fact let's have a look at this sign text here processor done that update this to make it blank so here's the trigger that actually also runs on an interval timer this time one second it's got a condition the condition says if in this inscriber here on the bottom side we have any one of these so the pr the actual processors go to the, this is a true condition so if this is true it then goes to this inscriber here from the north side and takes inputs one of these processors and simply outputs it into the storage drawer 
doesn't matter where in the blacklist then as I said updates the sign again so one more time let's show that with the last of these uh, presses which is this case it would be the uh, calculation press so that should be the quartz coming in here if you press delivered I'm not sort of updating that properly is it and here you see the press now there's no silicon let's put this let's do the silicon can't have a button at the top unfortunately so we should see some silicon coming in here in a few seconds there it goes look down here wait a few seconds there we have it and you can see everything's in place one engineering calculation circuit out another another redstone comes in ready for the next one and sure enough here we have the tenth calculation processor right I think that's all that I wanted to show you for today I hope you enjoyed it until next time bye for now